welcome you all for the raw online teaching program today we are going to discuss about an emergency related topic and that is status epilepticus so how will you approach a child with a status epilepticus and what are all the various definitions of status epilepticus and what is a high level of management and how will you monitor the child moving on to the topic the epidemiology if you see the status epilepticus is more common in the children who are less than 5 years of age that too if you see the incidence rate is around more than 100 per 1 lakh population so approximately 30% of these patients who are presenting with a status epilepticus they have uh, the, that is their first seizure attack that may be their first seizure attack in the first seizure itself they are presenting with a status epilepticus and 40% of these children may develop epilepsy in their later life so febrile status epilepticus of which is the most common type of status epilepticus in children so coming to the definition of the status epilepticus over a period of time there are lot of uh, definitions been conceptually evolved uh, regarding the status epilepticus so if you see basically uh, the mechanistic a definition may be there may be a failure of homeostatic mechanism to control the seizure so physiologically if you describe it it is a ictal compromise basically of the neuronal survival operational classification shows that it is a ictal duration warranting the emergency treatment so this is the concept based definition for the status epilepticus and if you see over a period of time there are various definitions which has been evolved in the, the defining the status epilepticus condition so the more recent thing given by the ilea e task force that is international league against epilepsy task force in 2015 has defined the status epilepticus as a condition that results from the failure of mechanism responsible for the seizure termination or from the initiation of the mechanism that lead to prolonged seizures that is t1 the t1 point is the treatment that should be initiated at that point and it is a condition that have long term consequences after the t2 that is the t2 is the time at which the continuous seizure activity that lead to the long term sequelae so that period is called as t2 so the difference the time of t1 and t2 determines the status epilepticus and also its sequelae so this is the current definition given by the ilae that is international league of epilepsy so coming to the newer terminologies in status epilepticus or first one is the refractory status epilepticus first one is refractory status epilepticus refractory means the status epilepticus that failing the first two lines of medications like first we will start with lorazepam for example benzodiazepine and then second line will be chosen as some non benzodiazepine medication if the seizure is not controlled with these two lines of drugs then it is considered as a refractory status epilepticus there is one more definition that is super refractory status epilepticus that is srse so this is defined as the status epilepticus that is persisting more than 24 hours or even after initiating the third line of medication now the third line of medication will be already an anesthetic drug so even after starting the anesthetic drug the epilepsy that is the seizure has not been controlled then it is called as a super refractory status epilepticus and there is one more uh, terminology called as nors nors is nothing but new onset of refractory status epilepticus means there may be no underlying like uh, you uh, there is no clear cut etiology to define whether the why the child is having refractory status epilepticus you can't have an any active structural toxic or metabolic cause in the patient who is actively fitting or there won't be any pre existing neurological disorder also so if you see this new onset refractory status epilepticus is a clinical presentation rather than a specific diagnosis so another entity called as fires this fires is nothing but nors with the previous febrile infection so this previous febrile infection should be somewhere between 2 weeks to 24 hours prior to the onset of the refractory status epilepticus so it is basically a subcategory of the nors that is new onset refractory status epilepticus 
So one more criteria is there that is non-convulsive NCSC that is non-convulsive status epilepticus. Uh, it is manifest as a confusional state, dementia or any hyperactivity with the behavioral problems or there may be fluctuating levels of impaired level of consciousness. So this should be considered when you are seeing a child in the emergency, uh, the child is like unresponsive and the child is an encephalopathic child, then maybe you have to think about the non-convulsive status epilepticus. So these are all the various terminologies given under the context of status epilepticus.